Outlaw, tis the season to be March night. Turn your thoughts forward if you're in... Hello and welcome to the stream. I am once again seeing that my stream does not look the way I want it to look. Let me go ahead and full screen this real quick. Uh, but apparently it's kind of okay when I full screen it. Of course, we are going to get the uh, the the, uh, the terrible effect. Um, oh wow, that is a really bad effect now. Um, so I probably can hit escape to get out of this, I hope. And then I'll minimize this or at least move to another tab so we don't get that. All right, hello and welcome to the stream. Um, you might be wondering why I am broadcasting earlier than normal today. It is 9.45, it was 9.45 a.m. Uh, Mountain Daylight Time. And it is because of Daylight Savings Time, or Daylight Saving Time. Uh, now, a lot of you are going to, the ones of you who are intelligent, which I hope is all of you, my, all my fictional viewers, are going to say, wait a minute, Daylight Saving Time should mean that you actually broadcast later. To which I say, I was pretty much lying about it to begin with. Okay, so yesterday we were, or last time, I'll, I'll just say last time because I don't know if I, I want to stream every day or even twice a day, but you know, it's like having sex. Um, sometimes uh, my penis is just not up to it. And yes, I do stream uh, this, uh, my penis does control my physical functions, as it does for most men. I, I realize there is a, a school of thought that says your brain controls your functions, uh, but that only applies to, to women and uh, homosexuals, homosexual men and maybe homosexual women as well. But if you're a straight male, uh, definitely the penis is in charge and uh, can have a lot of problems if you, if you don't, uh, don't listen to your penis. So yesterday we were trying to find a way to clip my stream so I could look at older streams, see screenshots and what I'd said, and combine that to sort of give a, a breakdown of what I'm doing in the stream at any given time. Um, because right now I'm, I have really no idea what's on my streams. I mean, I have some idea, but I don't know where anything is, when I was doing what, and we, we tried to fix that. Um, so last time we tried taking snapshots every 10 seconds, uh, and it didn't work, and I get the feeling, and I said that doing them only one a minute would be probably a bad idea too, because that's too infrequently. I'm gonna try to hit 30 seconds today. Uh, it probably won't work, uh, and I expect this is gonna be a waste of time, so as with most things that I do that are a waste of time, I'm, I'm very excited. Um, okay, so let's go back and look at our program here. Um, let's go back and see if we can find our program here. Um, I think it was VC something caption something. Maybe it's that? I, something tells me it's not that. It's not VC caption. There is a VC caption. No, no. VC parse caption. Yeah, that is it. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do here is let's not marry ourselves to uh, 10 second uh, to 10 seconds um, at a time. Let's, let's allow that to be an option. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, cut, time, stamp, every. Let's, let's just call it that. Um, so that'll be... Um, create... Now we're not actually creating screenshots. Ev this is, but this is create text for screenshots every n seconds. Okay, so that is fine, uh, and we'll say default is ten, um, which really is kind of stupid. But we'll just say it defaults, and this is something I've written before. So we'll just do this. Uh, but now we can say over here, uh, da, 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 mod to the nth second, and that is the nth second is glob ops. Um, every. Okay. Um, so now we have this th that writes every, every, uh, nth second. Um, we also probably don't want to name these things test.jpg.txt. Uh, that was good for testing. We kind of want to use the file name that we get and, and, and get the uh, name of the text files from that. Now you might say this is gonna get really ugly because you already have a lot of files in the caption directory because every language has a different file. So this is gonna make things worse. Um, oh, actually I put it in captions. So this is already has like um, 11,000 files. If you're gonna put in a new file for every 30 seconds of every video, it's gonna go crazy. Um, and we might be able to work around that by creating a subdirectory in captions where we can put this stuff. I was about to just joke that we could just, I don't really care, and I don't, 
but in this case, it gets a little bit ugly um, because there really are a lot of uh, there really are a lot of files in this. And at some point, if the directory gets big enough, and usually I, I use the rule that if directory size is more than one million bytes, uh, you might have real problems, slowdowns in accessing that directory. In particular, like when you do uh, file completion and stuff like that, that can be more tedious there. Um, and more time consuming. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the file name because we are given a file name and not just something on the standard input. And we're going to do something with the file name here. Uh, first of all, we're just going to debug it. We're just going to print it out because we are extremely paranoid. That is the weirdest looking path that I've ever seen. Will that actually work? I mean, technically this will work. Um, so the path name is, okay. And the reason I'm doing a path, but there is a reason I'm doing a path. We actually just want to know the last part of the, of the um, path name. So the one thing we have to do is uh, find last part of path and video and re reference video. Related video. Oh, I need a better word there. Um, associated. That's a big word. Uh, video. Uh, prefix. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, um, actually, can we do this? So we're going to try to match this part of the video. Uh, this part of the file name, rather. Um, I'm going to write this down here as a, as a reference. So what we're looking for is we can't have any slashes in it, so not forward slash, uh, plus hard dot. Now, this en, this can actually be more than one letter, so we will allow for multiple letters here, dot, and then vtt or srt. We're not, we don't actually need to capture which one it is, but I'm doing it anyway because I like to do it that way. Okay, so now we can debug, uh, and again, you're not really supposed to debug these temporary variables, but I live dangerously. Um, and the problem we're having here is we do have slashes, and I think, do I mean to say dot star question mark? I did say that, though. Um, <coughs> and I guess the only problem here is my dot kind of messed this up somehow. I had a dot dot there, which is unusual, but not... Um, so I guess what we have to do here is, this is a dot star question mark dot. So what am I not going to allow here? Um, you know what? This is too stupid. I think I, I will never actually do something quite as stupid as using dot, dot, then caption. So I'm going to pretend that case doesn't exist. Bad idea, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, cool. So we got the um, language, and we got the VTT, and the thing we missed is the thing we actually need, which is the, the file name, the file prefix, or, you know, whatever it is that's building the file prefix. So that, okay. And this is the YouTube... And I'm tempted, because this is YouTube, to use this as the directory name. Uh, however, we're, we're not guaranteed that um, all of these files are going to be from YouTube, so we can't really do that. Uh, we, we probably, and I don't like using this full name either, because it's really ugly, but um, got to do what you got to do. Um, and now, so, um, okay, so now we're going to say my prefix uh, lang, language, type equals dollar sign one, dollar sign two, dollar sign three. So we capture all of those. And now we're going to do a little bit of niceness here. If it turns out that there's already a directory with this name, we're going to assume that something's wrong. And we're just going to die. It, obviously, if you, know, if you need it, you can remove the directory first and redo it. Um, but this sort of prevents us from going a little bit too crazy with this. Um, and then we could do make dir. Now, there's a way to do this that basically forces it to um, actually that basically will die if it doesn't if some anything goes wrong. Um, and it's I call it do die I think, which is probably the worst possible name. Um, yeah, here it is. I used to love this function, actually. Um, so this will, this is what we want. We need to make it, but a after that. So, uh, and there really is a maker command in Perl. 
which I never use because I use the system maker, but I really shouldn't. I mean, um, oh yeah, there it is. So it's just basically maker, in whatever directory we're in, we do a maker prefix. Now this could fail, but then we're gonna chadur to it. If that fails, it'll, it'll, that, that will be, um, and we do need to put it in quotes because we want uh, it to, well, actually I'm gonna pretend we don't need quotes, but I think we do. I think this is not gonna work the way it is. Okay, so now, Let's see what happens. I think the problem is it's going to think I want to create the directory with the name dollar sign actually in it. So, yep, because I'm in the wrong place. So let's go back to, I, I should really get smart and have each of these screens do something different, which is why screen exists. Oh, wow. So I did not like that. Um, I don't know if this will, will double invalidate the, let's see what this does. Um, so apparently it did do a cheddar to it successfully. Um, and at some point this is going to get really obnoxious because we're going to be recreating this many, many times. And I'm doing a remove dir, so I'm, I don't have to worry about accidentally removing files. I'm so special. So if we do this, that's eh, still unhappy with me. Okay. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Oh yeah, I think I can reverse the p I can reverse the polarity. That not doesn't make sense, but I think I can do this. I think. Um, so we'll do the remove dir. Yeah, that's gonna get obnoxious very quickly. Okay, cool. And so now you might say, how do we know we're actually in that directory? This is not the right way to do it, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Um, yes, I'm going to get, this is going to get really frustrating. And there it is. We're now in the right directory. Okay, so we are going to add an option here um, called overwrite, which we might actually have, come on, don't do that to me. I've got a help a tool tip up now that Apparently, all right, we're going to cover you up and uncover you, and we'll be all gone. Um, overwrite. Do I already have an overwrite? Let me check real quick, because I might already have an overwrite. Um, all right, first Pomodoro, as always, we ignore it. And also ignore pretty much everything else in my life, by the way. Overwrite. Okay, I don't have a global option called that. Um, overwrite existing directory. If prefix um, move and reset, it's actually the same thing. Kind it's not really the same thing, but it's close enough. So now if glob ops overwrite, um, now again, this is not how you are supposed to do things. Um, And actually, I should even, I could even use my cache command for that, the cache command thing. Else. And I didn't actually have to go into this else loop because I could have just said, if not global ops uh, right, oops. No, actually I do need to do this because I, I only want to really remove the directory if it exists. Hello, Milkister Moo. Welcome to my stream. And this time I will not ignore you because there is not a Scandinavian person also speaking with me at this time. Uh, of course, as you know, Scandinavians uh, do take precedence over uh, all other nationalities. So we are um, continuing on what we were doing yesterday, which is attempting to index my streams, but realistically what we're doing is we're creating a program that will help me index my streams and we will never use it because I kind of know how this is gonna go. All right, so if the, if the override option is given, um, we'll just remove the existing directory and recreate it. And that's going to help us a lot because, uh, while testing, because we're going to do that, it, we're going to do that a lot. So, minus minus overwrite. Uh huh. Good deal. It's fun removing and recreating directories. And so now we're, we're treadered into this. Uh, so now we're basically going to do the same thing we did before. Um, 
Okay. Um, let me go ahead and quickly BC Gitify this. Um, because it, it has some non negative value. Um, and by the way, f feel free, Milk, just remove to ask any questions, comments, suggestions. If you want me to do something totally different, let me know. Uh, this is just bullshit time wasting until, well, you know, I was going to say until, until I die, basically, really. I have nothing else to do. So, um, okay, so we're now in this, pr we're in this uh, directory. Uh, we get rid of the stupid tags that for some reason YouTube adds. And then we basically just print out these files, except we're going to do something a little, mm, okay. I might have talked myself into a corner. Um, because uh, now we don't have to call, I was going to say we could call it the name of the file, but we're already in a subdirectory. So we're just going to call this transcript. Um, and let's see. And I think because we've chadered, this should all work. But now we can test it. I'm going to do one more thing then. So let's see what this does. Um, uh, you know what? I don't think I can actually. There we go. There we go. And I'm really not happy with this directory name, so just in case you're wondering. Um, uh, let's see how many of these we have. 708, which seems a little... Oh, right, because I did a default... Um, yeah. We're going to try it with 30 seconds today, and I didn't actually put that in, so... Um, overwrite minus every equals 30. And no, that was much quicker. And I can just do. Okay, that still looks like it's something that's probably doable. One more thing we're going to do here is we're going to actually not run, but we're going to print out the command uh, the user might want um, to create the uh, the screenshots. Um, and it, this is sort of useful because now we have a timestamp. We know that we're doing it every n seconds. So it's not clear what the uh, what the exact um, what the exact command might be. Although to be perfectly honest with you, um, this is uh, this is kind of one of those garbage things that I'm doing because I am I'm pretty stupid. So that's great. Oh no no one liners dot sh. Okay, different one liners dot sh. The second one. Okay, so it's gonna look something like no your mom. Wait, how did I do that? Oh, okay. I think I'm because I'm in text. I don't know. That really should have deleted both of them. But anyway, FF minus. Okay, so this is where we get kind of clever. Um, and because we're doing this, we're using quotes inside of quotes. Uh, we can do. Uh, I, I'm not sure how ugly I want to make this. You can use a different quoting character by putting QQ in front of it. So as long as there's no percentage in here, which there is, so we can't use that character. Never mind. Um, can we use hash? Uh, that's really probably a terrible character to use, but I'll use it. Okay, and so now, this, this is, this is way clever. Um, we don't know if the file is going to be MP4 or MKV, but it should match this file spec. The other thing we don't know, let's see. File name minus VF. So this is where it gets really ugly. And it gets so ugly, partly because to print the backslash, I have to print two backslashes here, and partly because um, partly because the number we're going to compute here is going to be ugly. Um, in fact, I've got to be really careful here, because yikes. Um... So actually, I might lose some sync here because, and we're not going to call it, we're not going to call this, of course, image. We have to call this, okay, so we're going to call this tran image. We have to give them the same name for Faye to understand that they're the really the same thing. So we'll call this tran image. This, I, I just realized there's another mistake here that we probably need to look at at some point. Okay, this. Now this, how do we compute the number of, um, um, how do we compute the number of, uh, of frames that we want to look at per time? Because mod n is not going to look at seconds. It's going to look at um, 
It's going to look at the frame number. Um, I'll call it fmod. Just now, fmod's a function. Uh, my frame mod is going to equal. It's going to be related, obviously, to the to the every. Um, so every ten seconds would be three hundred frames. I'm going to pretend it's this, but there's a, there's a problem. No, actually, there's no problem with this. I'm going to pretend it's 30 frames per second, but it's actually 29.97 for this. And if you're in scene mode, cinema mode, it's 24. So this is this is n this might cause problems. Okay. And so we'll put frame mode. I don't expect this printout to actually give me exactly what I need, but it might. And then end quote like this. If this works, I'd be surprised. Um, so it'll make the um, it'll make the uh, the captions. That's not a problem. And I probably should have put a new line in front of that, huh? Okay. The other sort of bad thing is you can't really run it here because my captions are in a separate. Oh. This is, this might, I might have bit off more than I can chew here. Um, because we actually need to put these. Oh man. We need to put these frames in the same place we're putting the, uh, the, ca the uh, transcripts. So this, this should do that. But now this means that my, um, Okay. Okay. I'm going to hard code a directory because I happen to know all of mine are in this place. And the cool thing is now I can run it from here, pipe it to shell, and presumably get the frames all in the right place at the same time as I get the transcripts created. Uh, so let's see what this does. Um, and so now if I pipe this to shell, I will regret it for the rest of my life. Oh. Okay. Oh shit, I forgot. Uh, it's not what I want actually. Um, it is not F name. F name is just the base of the file name. Um, Oh, it's the prefix. So yes, sorry, I, it is not F name. I shouldn't be using almost anywhere. Um, wait. Oh wow, that is really bad of me. Let me let me. That's that's too ugly. Um. Oh no, I guess we could. Um, I don't use it after here, so I guess I can repeat the the. This is just hideous though. Um. But it doesn't break anything, so right text. So I really should. Oh, right, right, because this is a different F name than the original F name. So putting an F name here is just insanely bad because um, because it's not. It's. I mean, it's supposedly the my has ended here, but I mean, it's just wrong basically. So this we should put the prefix, which is the name of it without the E N V P P. So now. Let's boogie. Conversion failed. Okay, that why? Um, could not open file. Input output error. That sounds more serious than I want it to sound. Um. Oh, sh shit. Wait. Uh, all right. So this time we'll just print it. So this sounds like it's saying something that's worse than what I what I I'm hoping. Uh, so let's see if this works. Okay. Um, um, oh, did I do it again? Um, the trans image should be in the prefix. Nope, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. Okay. So let me see if there's any other place I use F name. No, nope, I think we're good. I always say that, and I know it's going to just... Okay, so now, let's see if we can boogie with this. There we go. 
Now it's only every 30 frames, so even though it's on a mounted file system, this should go relatively fast. As, as you see, it's going like, this is the number of minutes it's, it's parsed. Now the problem we're going to have in just a minute, uh, I like announcing ahead of time that we will, is because this is already a pretty crowded screen, um, and it's smaller than my normal resolution, it's going to really, really, um, it's really, really going to bunch up the screen a little bit. So do be prepared for that. Um, but, and I guess when it's finished, it should probably tell me. Okay. Um, okay, so now I should now be able to say Fay minus C these fonts, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And so the other problem I need to do is I need to give the geometry to Fay. Um, and this is this is where we're gonna get ugly because I, I want actually I think I'm gonna just go full screen here. Okay. Um, okay. So this is doing kind of what I want. Um, I just don't want to. I just want to index my screen. I guess this is the issue. So this is extremely helpful to anyone who wants to index my stream, which it turns out is not me. But anyway, I'm happy with that. I'm going to VC get that real quick. Um, and then we'll move on to something maybe that's more interesting to me. And that would be, uh, we do have a VC occultations. Um, well, that's not what I wanted, but uh, we, do have a, uh, we, we do have a way of computing occultations. Uh, but the way we're using right now works only for things that have a NAFE ID, and I believe, um, I believe it requires that everything that, uh, that both the uh, light emitting body and the eclipsing body and even the, um, the, rec the receiving body, the, the target body, all have widths. So this is kind of... Um, this is going to be like really, really stupid. Let's just, what the hell do I have in here? Occultations? God damn it. I, I do this on purpose, don't I? Okay. Okay. Um, but we don't, if we want to look for occultations of stars other than the sun, we don't have a way of doing it. Uh, and there's really no way to even put it in there because uh, there are no NAFE IDs for the various stars. Now there's kind of two ways around this. One is to write a program that's very similar to this one, um, and and basically uh, and you know and but just that does it for stars. We do have all the stars defined uh, in a in a library. Um, the other way to do it, and I think I did start on that a little bit, so that might be to continue. That might be useful. Uh, the other way to do it is to try to create a NAFE ID for to create a, a SP key, uh, a spice kernel object to represent a star. I'm not sure that's a great idea either. Um, there are you can definitely create spice kernel objects, uh, but I think I don't really know if that that's a, that's the way we want to go with this. Um, so I I maybe I was going to do it that way, but now I'm kind of hesitant. Now let's see what we have here. BC um, star. Conjunct. Nope, that's probably not it. Um, okay. Oh wow, this must be really old because I have all my um, all my bclib.h functions defined right here. So let's go ahead and f see if we can find what I was doing earlier, uh, which might actually occur. Um, let's see. BC magnitude, BC BC parcel. Moon occult star. Okay, and that 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 is specific to our moon, I think. Um, but I think we can generalize this. Okay. Um, da -da -da -da. So what this basically does is uh, moon pause star. Okay, does a the angle separation. So with this, da oh wow. Okay. Um, So what this does is basically it looks at the moon's position. Now, because the moon has an actual angular width, uh, it's not a single point, 
um, you have to account for that. And then you also have to account for the fact that the moon has, uh, we have a parallax when looking at the moon. Uh, in other words, um, when we look at the moon from one side of the Earth, it's in a pretty much di very different position from when we look at it from the other side of the Earth. Um, and I guess what's going to bug me about this is... Um, If we do this for other, uh, now there is of course a technically a parallax when you look at a distant star, um, but that that parallax is minim so minimal, uh, it, it's hard to measure even on an Earth orbit scale. Um, so we'll ignore it. But the question is, do we can we ignore the? Uh, well, I guess we can't ignore the um, the body's parallax. So we. I kind of want to draw a diagram of this, but I get the feeling it's going to be much uglier than uh, than I want it to be. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm not going to draw it, but um, uh, let's see. Because this is closer to what we would call a penumbra, uh, a penumbral type of eclipse. Um, and so, and of course, we could do this for any target body. Uh, we don't have to stick with the Earth as being the um, um, as being the target body, I cheated a little bit here by um, by not getting these values from the spice kernels, which you, which you can do. Um, I guess another question I had at one point, which we we just didn't want to look at, is can we list all the NAFE IDs uh, for which we have um, for which we have data? Is there a way to do that? And for that, we're just going to play around out C. Oh, this was just, yeah, we tested with uh, HYG data. So now let's ask the question, uh, can we, is there a spice function that gives us a list of, um, gives us a list of NAFE IDs? So let's look for the word list. Parse items, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. Okay, no. So read a line from a text file. These are reading positions. Read data from address. DAFs, we're not using them. We're using SPKs. And we're not using EKs either. OK, so that's not it either. The kind of function, OK, it is Pomodoro time this time. I'm doing it back in two and two. We are almost back, and we are back. I may choke to death on stream, but that should be amusing. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm thinking it's going to be one of these. We do have built-in frame IDs. Bad kernel pool variable, 
body ID code to um, this might be it. Um, oh, that just gives you the name of body for later translation. Bracket, bracket, okay. So none of these things will actually list what uh, NAFE IDs you have loaded. Um, I don't think the word NAFE appears anywhere. Nope, it does not. ID definitely appears in here lots of times. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe this is the only time it appears. Um, center and class. So we have a lot of frames here. Ellipsoid. The identity matrix. By sh okay, let me do a match case here real quick. Oh! Well, these are frame IDs, so these are not... Um, okay, but we're getting close now. So frame IDs is not what we want, but... Uh, Kernel information might do what we want. Um, kernel totals, which we don't want. Uh, pick reference frames, validate an ID, s validate a set. Uh, okay, so let's let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. Return information about a loaded kernel specify. So you can't do it for all loaded kernels, uh, but we might be able to loop through those. Um, so let's see what this does. Yeah, that's not what we want. So, ooh, training. Um, okay, so we need still need to know a list of kernels, but I mean, let's kind of find values from the kernel pool, return values from the kernel pool, return, return, C kernel get pointing, get pointing, load pointing. I don't know what a pointing file is, but I don't think that's what we need. Clear the pool of kernel variables. No, not quite. Data for a kernel pool variable. Delete a variable from the kernel pool. Okay. Um, confirm the existence of a kernel pool variable. Furnish a program with, okay, so this might actually reference um, how to get a list of them once you furnish them. Uh, keyword utility. Yep, yep, this is just basically how to load one. Okay, um, blah, 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 blah. Files, particulars. Um, let's see. Hmm. Only text kernel readers. Okay, so da 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 da. So this still doesn't tell us how to get a list of loaded kernels. Uh, I mean, we could just look at the. I mean, we know which ones are, are loaded, but I'm trying to be maybe too clever. Um, okay, so these are just examples on how to load kernels as we actually know. Uh, a meta kernel cannot, so you can't nest them. I'm um, hoping that somewhere it says um, it does not. I was hoping it would say somewhere how to look at the furnished kernels. Uh, kernel, get character data from the kernel pool. Uh, is that what we want? I don't, I'm almost sure it's not what we want. Um, um, I don't think this is what we're looking for. <coughs> okay. Ooh. Okay. I kind of get the feeling this is not what we want, but this might be it. Return the integer value of a kernel variable. Okay, no, that's not what we want. Uh, get the names of the kernel pool variables. This we might be able to use. Actually, this we might be able to use to get what we need. Um matching a specified template, which I assume can be blank. Um, start the index of these. Um, okay, so this is right, let's, let's take a look at some uh, examples here. Um, 
name of kernel matching a template can be received. So the, the body frames here are, 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 they don't exist for every single um, object in NAIF, but maybe for our purposes, that will be enough. Um, I mean, we could look at all the variables and then just from there uh, see which ones, you know, that we can use. Okay, so we're going to try this, I think. Um, uh, okay. So let's do this thing. <coughs> okay, so we do want to definitely do the require here, furnish C. Uh, because that's what we're looking at. We will do an exit minus one because we don't want the rest of this code to run. So let's do this. And then let's go ahead and get the template. Let's go ahead and get a kind of a copy of this here. Um, all right, so we're gonna try to get all the variables. So I'm gonna start at zero. Room is going to be how, m I think it's how many um, Maximum number of variables that should be returned. Um, we'll start off slow with 100. We need to put them somewhere, so we'll, all, we'll need to do that too. Uh, len out, which is how big I think the length is allowed to be out. How big our individual variables can be. Uh, len should be at least 33. We're going to go crazy and make it 100, man. We're obviously going to need to put a place to put all of this. Um, so let's go ahead and declare. Um, uh, oh, that's a void. Um, I mean, I think I'm pretty sure the void we're gonna get back is a a list of strings. That that's that's what I'm expecting. Uh, so we'll do a spice boolean sound. Um, so n, this is the important thing, found. So the k bars is where the magic is going to happen, obviously. Um, yep, 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 yep. Um, yep. I was about to say that. I know you don't believe me, but I was. I was going to say it's something times something. Um, so the k bars are going to be have to be big enough for. 100 by 100 should be more than enough. Okay. Uh, there's some question as to whether this will even run. Well, let's see if this will even let's see if this will even compile first of all. Um, Oh, yeah, okay. Um, we actually need this to be the address of KVAR, although it's a... Uh, is that? It should be the same thing because KVAR is a two-dimensional array. Um, but okay. Whatever. Passing along it makes pointer from integer without a cast. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. So nothing wrong with k bars, it's just that I need to pass the address and also probably the address of found. Because it's going to fill them in for me. So now I'm pretty sure I could have done that with just one. So now, playground. Redeclaration of n with no fuck. Um, this is what you get when you try to have multiple programs uh, inside of a a, a single um, inside of a single file just for testing purposes but I think that will fix that and I, I'm okay with the Jacobian not being used okay that's fine but that should at least have worked okay nothing happened of course because we haven't actually alright so now we're going to go ahead and loop through these variables uh, I less than 
hundred. I I'm almost definitely going to need to um, to make these variables so I can be more generic here, even in even in the testing phase. Um, print as a string k vars i. All right, let's boogie down. All righty, these look kind of fun. So, I don't know what any of these are, but they look kind of cool. Um, I'm pretty sure the ones we're interested in are the body, whatever. I, let's see if we can sort them. I mean, obviously I can sort them. Body 199, body 301. This might be something like, well, I don't know. Okay. So these tell us without telling us which bodies are loaded. Um, uh, Nath body code. Okay. Okay. All right. All righty. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and BC get this even though it's trivial. Okay. So off it goes. So why don't we actually say, okay, so um, length I don't really care about because that's going to be like, um, I'm going to just leave that as 100. Um, room uh, is the variable we need to change. Okay, so size k vars. I hope it's room len. Otherwise, we'll fuck this up. Um, I'm going to need to look at the... Uh, the definition again here in just a minute. And I think I flipped those, actually. I wanted the other way around. I want my len to be 100. No, no, no. All right, fuck it. I'm going to just check it. Um, oh, room is the maximum number of variables. Len out is the length of the strings. So I, we'll just call it len out to make them happy. So strings can be up to 100 characters long, which is more than you need. And I want 10,000 variables out of it. And k vars, I think this is well. Yeah, this is correct because there's room number of variables, and each of them can be up to length len. Okay, uh, and then the third parameter is room, and then len out. But we'll pretend. Uh, I guess we're gonna call it len out. So let's just call it len out. Okay, and this should be less than len out. I think that should do it. <laughs> So now let's look at 10,000 variables. There's there's a joke in there somewhere, but I don't know don't know what it is. 10,000 uh, 50 cups or okay. Not very exciting. So either something went wrong in the make or okay, I think it's which I shouldn't be because I actually didn't change that much, but you know. You know. Um, okay, but you did compile, and there's more than 100 variables here, so, oh, uh, did I actually F this up? Did I leave 100 in there somewhere? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. Once again, I confused room and line out, so let's see what this does. Here we go. Lots and lots. Whoa, hey. There aren't that many variables, apparently. So if we sort, we'll get rid of the multiple blank lines. Sort minus u, we'll get rid of the multiple blank lines. Okay, is this... This is kind of sad. What the hell is this? Are there, like... So we have all these lovely variables that are about, um, okay, so we have about 622 of them, then there's a bunch of blanks, and then for some reason, and it might be that I'm doing, um, it might be that I'm uh, getting a, um, I'm looking at a part of memory I'm not supposed to be looking at, but apparently right here at the end, 
It's gotta be here somewhere. Oh my god, did I just go like one? Okay, here we are. So starting at line... 9831... Um, I'm getting some crap. And I don't know why. But at this point, I probably don't care. Um, you know, I'm almost wondering if Len out should be like 101. No, I mean, that, that should be okay, actually. These are all like date formatty things that I don't think they are considered kernel variables. Okay, so now we've done something that was fairly pointless. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, in fact, let's make this into a little tiny program of its own. Um, BC list kernel vars dot c. Now this is kind of ugly because it's literally just. Um, it's literally just a wrapper. It's around a single function. Um, that's all variables in loaded kernels. And the reason, uh, of course, we could do something even more clever, like try to get a list of bodies out of it. But let's see. Okay. Not very exciting. Not very exciting at all. Uh, and in theory, we could try to parse it out, look at the body numbers. I don't want to do that, though. So I'll explain why. I'm, I won't explain why. I will proceed. List kernel variables. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to pick out of these. Let's go ahead and do a... Uh, Sort. I guess sort does something weird here, but I mean, uh, we still have like about five, four, five hundred. Um, let's actually do a little bit better than that. Let's do f grep body. So here we are. We have okay, and then pomodoro, 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 pomodoro. Oh, oh, pomodoro. Back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are back. Okay, so now we want to, um, you know, this is again, we could do it some other ways. Um, I want to see if this even works. It's not called, yeah, because. Oh, wait, hang on. Ignore case. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, now there's there's a reason I'm not happy with this, but let's let's call this body list one. 
and it's 117 bodies that we know about. So that's not a bad body list. I mean, I'm, I'm fairly impressed with it. Uh, these are all asteroids, I think. Um, and actually, I don't have to think because, which is good, because I'm not really good at it. Um, this file will tell me. Yeah, it's the, this is these are going to be the JPL asteroids, and here we have a list of them. Um, but not all of them are in there. Um, except for these three, which are okay. So that's where we get the kind of funny looking numbers is from this older naming scheme. Okay, cool. So what's wrong with this is I don't think I load every single kernel in standard.tm. And honestly, I really shouldn't load every uh, single kernel in uh, here. Um, and I'm tempted to make one called max kernel, but I'm not, ooh, crap. Now I have an opportunity to add a BC to something. Um, so now I feel I must. BC max kernel dot TM. Exactly the same. Um, now I'm going to start tweaking it, of course. So I guess there's quite a few things I haven't added in here. Um, all right, so let's just add these in if they're not already here. Uh, and I actually don't think it's you can add them twice and it doesn't hurt anything. By the way, loading a kernel does not mean that you are um, actually, I think I can go crazy here. Load these all and then I'm going to do a sort minus u to make sure I don't have any duplicates. So not removed for testing. Temporarily removed. Um, and by the way, I do need to make these home user because I'm trying to gen genericize here. Um, probably don't care. This is the max version uh, for BC. I forgot what it was already. List kernel vars. Stuff. Okay, so now let's see if any of these are repeats. I don't think they will be. Um, oh, that one is. 72011. Oh, yep, it does appear twice. Okay. There's going to be another issue here, it's, and it's going to become a real pain in the ass in just a second. But, but let's now do. A, oh, and now, of course, we have to change this one to, to load uh, bcmaxkernel.tm. And now I think what's going to happen is it's going to compile OK, but it's going to complain because a lot of these files are not in the right place. Uh, or, or it won't. Um, 758. Oh, cool. Because this is bigger. Um, all right, we'll call this body list 2. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We, we actually need to do the whole Perl thing with it. Okay. Um, so we'll put that in here. Output of this can be piped to... And we'll look at a little Perl sucker here. Sort minus u... Da -da 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 -da. Uh, I don't say why you would do this, but you know that's that's one of those things. It's like, well, you know, uh, I, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but you can if you want to. And of course, the reason is to get a list of of body numbers, uh, or to lose my X terminal. God damn it. Okay. All right. So this sucker, this sucker, and I I need a pipe here. I'm not going to go ahead, let's see. Okay, so that didn't add any bodies, which can, which is not good. Um, um, so something has either gone terribly wrong, or I ran the wrong program. Because I meant to ran, run, rin, I meant to ran. 
um, this. Okay, so that's not working. And I think I know why. This is where we're going to get the error about... Um, well, that's not the error. We expected a different error, please. Um, did, I, did I leave off the hyphen? I did. Okay, one more time. Uh, oh, I need to rebuild it. Yeah, here we go. This is where it's going to get ugly. Oh, shit, I didn't mean home Barry Carter. I, I said I was going to change it, and I didn't. Where's the user slash? Dun, 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 dun. And I guess now that I did that, I probably need to do the unique again. Okay, good. So now, didn't mean to do that. Okay, and this is where I expected to see the problems. Um, because I don't have everything at the top level, um, I'm not going to be able to link it all. And because for some reason I don't have the E4, that's not cool, I do have that one. Please stand by. If I don't, I'm going to be unhappy with myself. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, badness is occurring. Please stand by. Um, nope. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, wow. So my kernels here actually are... Uh, motherfucker. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can fix this, although fix is sort of a uh, sort of a stretch. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, now I'm unhappy. Oh wow, it looks like this is something that I lost. Um, something I lost in one of the disk, disk crashes because the, these are files that are really too big to back up. So I'm unhappy now. Um, the problem though is wouldn't these show up inside of, um, because I do have the whole NAFE directory in here, or do I? I do not. So stand by here. Um, so let me actually do a quick. Okay. Uh, this is not looking too good at all. Yeah, a lot of these things are linked to nowhere. Um. So what the fuck have I done wrong? Okay. I'm actually kind of surprised how it would work without how it worked without these. Even without the new additions. Well, let's actually go Okay, I'm gonna go back to standard.pm. Standard. Okay. Oh, home user spice kernels. Isn't that where I'm? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I might be in the. I might be fucking this up. Hang on. Uh, spice. Oh, okay. I I was screwing that up. I was looking in a. I apparently have a directory here called kernels. Um. Which I guess is a sim link. No, it's not. It's bizarre. Why do I have that? Okay, we'll probably do something about that later. Okay. 
So now I'm back on track here. I understand what is wrong, and I believe I can fix it. But it has to be fixed from the other machine, unfortunately. Um, and so which one was it complaining about? I've forgotten now. It's not, it's list kernel variables, isn't it? Yeah. DE433.BSP. Wait. Oh, shit. DE433 is an actual, um, is a full ephemeris. So we don't need that. I'm an idiot. So this one, in fact, um, um, so actually, I think if we're loading the um, the really th these DE four thirty one ephemerises, we don't need to be loading any of these guys. All right, let's see what that does. Um, okay, that's a much more reasonable thing to happen. Um, so now, yeah, and this is because I don't have my kernels linked properly. Um, terrible person, I know. Oh, actually, no. Apparently, Jupe 300 is an old version, so I probably don't want it. This is fun. Um in the sense of not being fun. All right. So apparently that was one of the older versions that we don't need anymore. Uh, SAT365, well, maybe that's an older version too. Let's just see how smart we are here. And I know it's an older version because it shows up under a old version. In fact, I probably can show you what, where this is. Um, and that's the only place it shows up. So there is not a, like a re review, a new version of it. So this, Set 365. So let's actually go ahead and look at these. Um, um, da, 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 da. Okay, I apparently have a phone call from someone I don't care about. So we're going to just. And I don't care about anybody but you people on my stream. You're all wonderful. And there should be some place where it says FTK A. Um, Oh, wow. Okay. A old versions. So these, holy fuck, there's a lot of them. These are, well, let's just do the uh, uh, BSP files. There's a lot of fucking old versions here. So this might take a little bit of time to get rid of these suckers. Um, so this is this has gone into a, a black hole here. Um... That may not be necessary. Th this is the thing that predicts the that gives you the Earth's uh, position between two given times. In this case, uh, to the year 2016. I think, though, we can. It is subsumed by a later a, a different file um, because that is um, because that file is outdated and has been replaced. Okay, cool. So we we got it. Uh, that was the only ones that were missing. Now, the other question is, do we actually have every single uh, BSP file that is not uh, an older version? Um, and I don't know the answer to that, but let's find out. Uh, actually, don't need to use my name. Okay. And the w ones in the top directory are the ones we already have. That's, that's where we're getting them from. Um... So, oh wow, no, we don't actually have them. Um, and we don't want the ones in the old versions, obviously. We'll, so we'll do a grep minus B on that. And, um, and actually, I have no way of knowing whether. I mean, we could. Ooh. Fixed Earth stations could be really useful for us. In fact, all of these stations could be useful for us. That one we might want. 
we might want to add those. And then the rest of the, did I do a sort on them? I did not. If we do a sort on them, then we can get rid of, we don't have to look at the ones that are already in the directory we already, this directory we already have. So I think we have codes from Astro, we do, okay. So the Asteroids one, we don't think we have the Comets one. Let's get that in there, that sounds like fun. Um, oh, actually we do have one of the Comets ones, interesting. Um, We don't have the Lagrange points. I don't know if I care about that, though. Sorry, Lagrange points. Um, the comets definitely seem interesting, and the um, stations seem interesting. So let's go. Okay, I can't do that from here because it's a symbolic link. But I can do that from uh, where I am now, where you can't see it, where I am. So let's see. Whoa. Oh, apparently the, I already have the comet sim linked. I just don't have them included in my kernel file. We could probably do something about that. Um, and the other one was stations, which I'm pretty sure I don't actually have. And I'm wrong. We did. We already had those two. I think. I guess I already linked all the BSPs. All right. So the BSPs listed here are none because they're all in kernels, but listed here, some of these are, um, some of these are, well, they're all sim links. Some of these are not useful though. Let me see if there's any, if I ever link to an old version, because I, I really shouldn't. I don't, okay, good. So now what we wanna do with this is if we can sort this, um, in theory, we could add these to this list. Um, so I'm going to see if we have SAT 368 in there. Okay, we don't. So th there are really some. There are really some missing ones from here. Um, and I, I don't think the other way is true. I think everything. Well, obviously everything here has to exist. Uh, all right, Pomodoro, back in two and two.
are almost back. And we're back. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and BC get this before I go fuck it up. Um, okay. So we can just basically add all of these files. M maybe not every single one of them if they have problems. Uh, but, uh, you know, most of them in anyway. Um, and we can just actually auto-create auto that. Um, so we can go ahead and get rid of all the BSP files we already have. Yep, this is this is what you call a bad idea. Because I get I'm, I know I'm going to screw this up somehow. So okay, no more BSP files. So now what we need is a bunch of. Um, oh, I put another comma here. Yikes. So now we're just going to basically, um, you know, uh, see if this works. Uh, Pro minus uh, E, print, and all we need to print here is open. Okay, so this is going to be a little tricky, but I, I can handle that. Uh, the apostrophe character, you cannot print it because we're using the apostrophe to escape the Pro program, but if you do a backslash 47, you end up getting an apostrophe. Uh, comma, and I think we're going to be okay because the new line is automatic. Um, yeah, it would be useful, of course, if I actually, you know, use the name of the file instead of just printing out hundreds of copies. Okay. Um, God, I, I know this is going to be a bad idea, but anyway, so we'll just tee this to temp, temp1.txt, and then we'll just include it in here and regret this for the remainder of our lives. Okay. So we've now loaded in every single fucking BSP file that I think we downloaded all of NAFE's site. So this is everything they had at the time they had it. Now I I fear what will happen now. I also fear where the hell I was. Oh yeah. Motherfucker. Did that actually work? Uh, wait a minute. Um, I am not seeing much magicalness happen here. Uh, do we need to remake this? I shouldn't have to remake this. Um, I will, but... Okay, that did not look like that many variables. So I'm unhappy. Um, mm. um, I mean, I could increase the number, but that really shouldn't be an issue because you're not getting anywhere close to that. Unless you are and you're not telling me about it. You naughty, naughty program you. Alright, so let's do this. Um, I get the feeling something is wrong. Uh, well, we are 117. Um, so we are, there's something we're not loading. And now we could, if we wanted to, um, well, the one problem here is it's not giving us an error message. and it, It's really, really good. The one thing this thing is good at is giving error messages. Sometimes there's too many of them, but I've never had an issue where there are too few of them. Um, so it apparently accepts this. But it somehow, all right, here's what we're going to do. Um, let's look at SAT 425 BSP. Well, we're going to actually look at the comments for SAT for and see what body we expect to see from there. It, it's going to be a body because Saturn is the sixth planet. It's going to be a body. Uh, 
Oh, come on, don't. Seriously? I don't have these in my bin. Okay. All right, so what we're, what we're going to do here, and I'm going to explain this more in just a minute. Um, you can, there's a way to just read the comments. It's like the first few lines or the comments. 601, 60, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Um, I, I, I mean, I have the comment file in s the CLMNT. It's got to be here somewhere. All right, let me see where it is. Give me a sec here. On the other machine again. Why do I even bother? Mm. C-O-M-N-N-T. Oh, cool. I just had it wrong. Okay. So now, let's see what's in Saturn. That was not helpful. Um, 612, 613. Uh, and let's see if these are showing up here. Okay, I really need to start figuring out what the hell I'm doing. Is this where I'm running the... No. So this is where I can do the comment RP. Uh, over here. Okay, here's where I'm doing this. Okay. Um, so we would expect to see 612 in this list, and we do. 632. Okay, so we see those two. So some file... Well, actually, I guess we're getting as far as SAT 425. Um, okay. Let's see what SAT 428 gives us. I get the feeling this might be, we're getting everything, and that's just, it's just not that much crap. Um, okay, so this should be S2004 crap. Oh, fuck. I know what's wrong. Yep. Um, oh, for one thing, that's wrong, but I mean, that's probably not the main thing that's wrong. Because uh, the main thing that's wrong, I think, is that some of these, I assumed all the bodies were actually numbers, but they're not. As you can see here, we have S, this is not, you know, it, that would show up as 2004. What the hell? The other possible issue here is... Well, first of all, I want to see if I have all 10,000 variables. Nope, I don't. I mean, blah, 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 crap, 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 stuff, stuff that doesn't exist. Bunch of blank lines, which I... Come on, man. And then all of these. So the question is... Oh, fuck. So the question is, just does having these... Um, create any sort of a variable. And I mean, it should, right? Constants on file. Mm, apparently it doesn't, actually. Alright, so... So the question is, how do I get a list of the bodies on file? How do I get this out of knowing that I've loaded this kernel. Um, I mean, list bodies in kernel or something. Well, list list loaded kernels and then list bodies in kernel. So I guess we can do a list um, bodies in kernel. That was one of the things we were allowed to do. Um, I think that was one of the... Oh, God. All right. God damn it. Ah, this might be worth hiding. Find the set of ID codes of all objects in a specified SPK file. That, <sighs> yeah. This is good, but I, that doesn't tell me which files I have loaded, but we're getting there. Okay, 
and there is no but we're definitely getting this we're gonna keep this in mind we're, we're gonna we're gonna put this into our into our repertoire of things to look at um, list objects in kernel and so now all we need to do is list the loaded kernels size limitations, unload a kernel, bad kernel, find values from the kernel pool. All right. I could I could um, Google this. Yeah. But the problem is that there's very little on Spice. Let's try it anyway. List of loaded files. Ooh. This is nice. K data. Oh, for the nth kernel. Um, okay, so let's look at some examples here. Um, okay, K total C tells us how many uh, spice files are loaded. Okay. All right, so let's do this. Um, uh, are these are these things I know about? I mean, K total and stuff. Are these listed here, hidden away? Yeah, they are. Kernel data, kernel totals, kernel information, kernel. What is the thing they want us to look at? Oh, hang on. K data. Is this a new? No, K data. And then over here. Oh, yeah, there it is. Kernel data. Okay. The nth kernel among. So this is just the code here is going to be what we want. K total C gives us the. Um, Number of sp number of spice kernels, not the number of all files loaded, but that's fine. How many files loaded? Spice int count, uh, and then we will just call this sucker. Oh, so the first argument has to be SPK to mean. Sp I guess we could do that with anything if we really wanted to. Alrighty. And then, before we go any further, um, and then exit minus one. Because I do want to see if this, so this is, now we're getting kind of to where we need to be, maybe. Um, I don't really know where I am, so we're, we're just going to go over here, do a make. Okay, apparently that was not reconnected to the mount point. Now it is. And let's see. Nice, no errors. And I need to rehash because I'm in this screen. 40 SPK files loaded, I love it, okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and DC get this because I'm fucking paranoid. Alright. And so now we're gonna go ahead and list those kernels. And I think they give us the code just pretty much directly. Um, and we do need to declare these variables, but we'll do that. Um, And we will do it in our own style. Um, 
So we're going to get the IF kernel information. Let's, I don't know. Why do we need type here? Doesn't it know? I guess we'll, we'll, we'll let it live. Okay. Kind. Okay. Available space in output file string. source string. All right, so basically because we don't it doesn't know how big these things will be um, create strings to hold results and strings are of course just um, Let's see, what, let's see what kind of data we're going to get get out of it. Um, okay, f name, type, source, handle. I guess we need to do all of these, but um, f name, type, source. And found is going to be a spicy boolean, obviously. I should kind of just declare that as a, uh, and I'm guess getting the feeling that's going to be declared somewhere below, and it's going to fuck me over. Um, but okay, so the the lengths here are all going to be a hundred. So now, of course, we have the uh, the variables, the uh, uh, and because these are arrays, I can send them in as f name type source. So far, all good. And then the last one's going to be found, but address of found. And this one is the one that might be kind of weird. Um, okay. What is the type of handle? Yeah, it's a spice. Okay, so handle's going to be a spice int. Um, I almost, I'm almost sure found is going to screw me over. Um, okay. Now, for right now. Um, all right, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. Okay, we are almost back. And we are back. Okay. Alrighty. So if this works, I don't know if this will even compile though. Okay, so, oh yes. I thought I might need more, <laughs> so I left a comma hanging. Yep. So this, I dubbed the found2. OK. 
Okay, now I, this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to run. Yep, it does. Okay, so now printf f main f main. This is not very exciting. We 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 kind of know what the the file name is. Actually, it might be exciting because now we can we can suck down the number of the um, the bodies in the file name. But so this m actually might be useful. So forget what I just said. Nice, I like it. All right. So from the file name. Okay. So now that we have a kernel, we can do some shit with it. Um, I think that's k info, right? Uh, no, this is actually what we're doing now. Okay, I've got too many of these things open, so I'm going to do something terrible, which is close other tabs. Oh, it normally, it would warn me that I'm closing 10 billion tabs, but whatever. Um, okay, so kernel data, which we just used, I think. Kernel info, which I think maybe is not. Oh, specify by name. Okay, okay, okay. Well, can you tell me? Um, no, this does not give me a list of objects in the kernel. But I think I saw that function earlier. In fact, I think I was clever enough to even make a note of which function to look at. Um, come on. Um, Spook obj c. Alrighty. And it returns a list of find the set of ID codes of all objects in a specified SPK file. So that is um, the only thing I sort of don't like is it returns a spice cell instead of an array of ints, which is kind of what I want. But that I might have to live with that. That might be a uh, can't do anything about that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's take a look at their their example. Should there be pretty much do this for me. And they, they do try to do this correctly, but the problem is it, it confuses people who are looking for a minimal example, so they suck. Um, so what is IDs here? Is it just a... Um, okay. So we need one of those suckers. And that's just a weird structure they've, c they've created themselves. Hold data. Old IDs for kernel. Given kernel. And uh, this is a macro, actually. And I think we'll allow up to ten. There's never going to be ten thousand objects in in a in a kernel. But um, and then we can use this function. Um, and give it um, the file name, and we give it. Oh, I think we actually do give it this uh, 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 um, pointer to the argument. Now, when you have a spice int cell, you, there's you can you can go th you can loop through it. They might actually have an example of how you do that here. Yeah, card C. Oh, wow, they're being kind of silly. Um, God damn, is this really the only way to get... Hang on. There's got to be an easier way to do this. No, nope, I guess there isn't. So we take all this crap, paste it over here, and figure out what the hell it's doing. Again... This is maybe one of the problems I have with um, lo everything. Um, with people who are trying to write, uh, who write co example code, they always assume you know they have to write it correctly because people might use it directly. But a lot of times you're just looking for code fragments, and you just want to get sort of the minimal uh, thing going. And this is why this sort of code is really bad. And of course, we have to use a different variable here. Uh, J is this is actually, I'm not crazy about using this without put making a separate variable, but I guess that's okay, because they do it. All right. 
So now we go to every kernel, every object in the kernel that we just gave the file name for. Um, See, the problem here is it's going to give us a lot more information than we actually want. Um, we just need the object number. We don't need all of this bullshit. Okay. And we do need to have a spice int called... Oh, do I want to declare inside of the... Can I declare inside of a... So this is going to tell me how many objects that there are in um, this file that I'm looking at. Um, which I probably don't even care about. Um, what I do care about is the number of um, in okay. Let's see if I can get out of this. Coverage for object, object. So object is, e oh, okay. So maybe this is, this is all I need then. Even though I was poopying it earlier. Um, and how are they defining object? Oh, that's not too bad actually. So I could just do over here, In the IDs thing, just find, okay, come on, the ith element, which in my case will be the jth element because we are looping to j. Uh, and then the rest of this is just bullshit. Okay. So we'll print the file name. Then we will get the uh, spice element in the ith position, which I guess is of IDs, which we got up here. Um, Oh, the JF element. And then I think we could just do this. And they're using LD, but I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to not go crazy here and just assume that we have... Um, all right. I'm going to assume that we're not going to go crazy here and we're going to have just regular integers. We might have negative ones, but I don't think we're going to have ones that are need the long integer format. So let's see if this works. Beautiful. Motherfucker. Alrighty. Oh wow, this will even tell me for the ones that are sort of stupid and uninteresting. Um. I guess the only thing that worries me is No, I guess even the um even the Saturn stuff is going to have an ID like 65,000 something. Yeah, so even though it has the code name is, let's go ahead and look at it real quickly to, if, right. So even though the name is like this, the um, it still has a number that is separate from that. So we can still get this all as just numbers. Um, fantastic. All right, so I wonder how many of these suckers we have. Oh, right, right, because we're looking at um, different kernels. These are obviously not all going to be unique, because some of them appear in more than one kernel file. This is gorgeous. This is fucking gorgeous. All right, so we're going to sort it. Uh, I, I probably should have done a sort minus n. Yeah. So why don't we just go crazy, crazy? We're just going to print out the list of objects here without the word f name in front of it. Um, and I d forgot to. This better still work. Okay. Um, I forgot to bc get this. Okay, done. Okay, so now. Um, yeah, I think we're good actually. 
So now we're going to do a sort minus numeric sort uh, NU. And the things we do not, the 40 SPK files loaded is vaguely interesting, but we probably don't need that. Um, and what the hell, we don't need the file name either, really. Just print what the fuck I want, which is just the integer data man. How many things do we have in here? Okay, so this is pretty decent. We've got like um, a lot of things. 884. Um, body list in DC max kernel. They call it, I, I, I don't care what I called it. Okay. So this is this is our interesting body. 884 different bodies in pretty much all the goddamn files I could find. Uh, there are probably others. I mean, some of these are actually Earth stations too, which are unlikely to occult anything. That would be <laughs> kind of a weird, um, kind of a weird thing. Okay, so now our question is, we want to see if any of these suckers occult uh, stars. And we're going to be using Moon Occult Star very, very nicely. And I don't think we want to be using Earth Radius and Moon Radius. We probably actually need to use, um, oh wow, I haven't even included the um, the standard spice libraries. How do I, how does this work then? How do I get this? Oh, because bclib, I think, retroact not retroactively, recursively loads in the other libraries. Um, so we're not going to do this. We are going to do, um, all right, so we want uh, and we do go ahead and go through loop through all the stars here, I think. Um, oh, well, we do it over here, but still, we do it. Um, okay, and so so th the um, so the two things we're looking for, uh, since we're going through all the stars, we don't need to look at what's being occulted. We check every star for that. Um, so our input should be. A oh no no no! Let's let's not go crazy with that. Thing that occults. Um, viewer. Thing that occults. The list of stars is not important. Start at. And we can, I think we can do that. Um, and here we'll just handle the, um, do the arguments, which I know I know how to do because I've done it before. Shiny, A to F, arg, whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure pretty sure I've actually been more clever than this. Oh, S year is what I call the starting year. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So that is one, two, th I'm pretty sure that's the third argument. God damn it. ArgV0 is the name of the program itself, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And in fact, I should probably do this. Uh, print a usage string if they don't give me the right number of arguments. If argc not equal 4 Usage, program name, viewer things that are called, and I think maybe I should call this uh, S year and end year. Just S start and end are maybe a little bit too generic. S year, E year, new line, semicolon, exit minus one, and then proper exit. But now, assuming everyone is happy, we will do int. Um, 
viewer. Okay, this this is too ugly. A culture. That's that's not too confusing. Okay. Okay. In this case, it's a to i of aug v one culture. And this is just going to be double e e where equals this. Ugly four. I think that's correct. And I'm probably wrong. Okay. So then we furnish the. Um, I should probably put a comment here that says uh, handle the arguments. That's not very useful though. Um, so we still don't need to load this yet. So that furnishes the kernel, and we create in the CN fine a window that goes from S ear to E ear. Okay, so now something vaguely ugly about this that I don't like. Can't put my finger on it. Um, a culture pause star pause, which I'm just, the only thing I'm going to change about it is capitalize this one letter. And I don't know if I need the rest of these. Um, we use global star pause here for, what? Yo mama. We can't do that then, can we? Um... So why the hell do I need to, uh, oh, oh, okay. We don't declare a new one. Okay, that's what I was trying to say to myself. Okay, and we will leave it a star pause. Pomodoro time, back in two and two. Almost back. And we are almost back. <laughs> um, okay. So we're back. Um, okay. Blah, blah, blah. So the thing I'm cheating about here is this. Um, and so the two things we need to know is the angular radius of the thing that's doing the occulting, uh, which requires knowing uh, its distance from the viewer and its, uh, and its radius. And then the parallax as measured from Earth, uh, which is, I think, arc sine, uh, it's this sucker here. Um, I think I'm being like super clever by doing this. Um, adding the two radiuses. Something just clicked, but I think it was supposed to click. Um, so, so really, uh, I'm very, there's, there's something, 
funky about this that I don't like. Um, so we'll try this. Um, and the idea here is we're compensating for both the angular radius um, and the parallax at the same time. Um, and then if we look for one that's less than one, oh, I'm looking for local minimums, huh? We could also just look for one that's less than one. Um, and that would indicate a, an occultation. Um, okay. Now I am kind of tempted to see if this will still run. It probably won't. I mean, I've been very lucky so far that anything's been running. Um... Oh yeah, that would be nice, huh? Okay. So I have screwed this up enough. This one's easy to fix. We actually, the, um, the name of the program itself. And let's see what this is saying to us. Uh, moon pause undeclared. So that's kind of a... Oh yeah, because we are now calling it a culture pause. You know what? I'm just going to call it moon pause again. And moon pause sounds like M O O N P A W S, which is cool. All right, so let's see what this does. Unused variable, unused, but that's not a problem. Now, if I do this correctly, this should break. Good. So the viewer is Earth, the occulter is Moon, but this doesn't matter because not, we're not actually looking at it. And am I being stupid? Is ArcSD the, is it five or something? Is it always like one bigger? Um, all right, let's see what that does. Oh yeah, right now we're not actually looking for occultations, we're looking for, for minimal distances. Um, all right, so now we're still not quite ready, to, I'm not quite ready to fuck with this too much. Um, okay. So what we want to do here is if the separation which I'm sure is being given here in pointless units. Um, uh, separation, oh, this is the separation angle here. Oh, that is probably degrees, actually. Um, did I actually, did I somewhere actually s define sep to be in degrees? Um, Oh wow, that's in radians? I, I'm suspicious. Um, I'm very suspicious actually. Uh, Ang set baseline, arc radius, lunar moon pause. Uh, there's no place in here where I'm converting from uh, radians to degrees. So 39, uh, 39 radians doesn't even make sense. So this is prob oh, 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 actually, hang on. In the printf, I might be doing, nope. Hmm. The, okay. 39 radians of separation does not make sense. Let me look at this result again. Um, this has to be degrees, I mean, I, 
somewhere I'm doing a degree conversion and, and just not and I'm spacing it. But um, oh no 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 sorry this is the value is the uh, oh right right okay right this is the number of uh, of if this number is less than one we should have an occultation. Um, this is a mul yeah right so this is a multiple of uh, how many occultations we need I guess okay. And, I, and I, I know we tested this before, so I'm beginning to feel like an idiot, but, you know, that's pretty damn typical. Um, so, come on, one year. Speed it up. Really? For one freaking year. Alright, this should not take that long. I mean, I am printing it for every local minimum for every star, but that really should only happen once a year. Um, I think the problem maybe is that I'm doing a one second time interval. Um, no, I'm not. I'm doing a 10-day time interval. Uh, something's wrong, man. I mean, we got something, so... Holy crap, it's not gotten slow enough that... Okay, so it did work. That's not even that many lines of output, so I'm kind of confused, I guess. All right, so this says star 154 at this, which is a 4.37 magnitude. At this time, should be occulted by the boom. Oh, we've done this before. Um, okay. And I think the only thing I'm worried about here is how I'm computing this multiple of angular separation. Um, and instead of looking for the local minimum, we should be looking for times when it's less than one. Uh, in other words, so why, why is this correct? Uh, I mean, I sort of understand why it's correct. Because this effectively adds the parallax and the angular radius uh, together. Um, uh, but it still bugs me. I guess, I guess this sort of makes sense, though. Um, in theory, you could just consider the moon to expand a little bit, to be bigger, so that... Uh, so that it, to represent points of view from different parts of the Earth. So this could be technically correct. Okay. Um, this is going to bug me. Mm. Is it just the amount of printing it does? I mean, that, that is a, took a really, really long time. And my main machine is not that heavy. Uh, not, not that heavily... Um, doing anything. So, I mean, the thing to sort of figure out that'd be really cool would be like, does Mars occult any stars? That's much, much more difficult. Um, or Neptune or asteroids. Or the, the cool thing is it could be anything in this list, because even if the object's very faint, I think this is the third time I'm saying this, uh, the fact that it covers a bright object is what's the, is the interesting part. Um, and again, of course, this just means somewhere on Earth the occultation occurs. It doesn't tell us where the occultation occurs. Um, so... This... Uh, I, you know, 
drives me nuts because I know we've done this and I'm like so on May 20th well we might as well fucking bring up Stellarium cool so May 20th of this year which is still not here yet something, something is being kind of wacky here 520 and we can just find it now we can just find the moon okay and now hip 11427 so what is the well we don't have a name for it but what what star is it we're saying this is going to happen to who is our unlucky or lucky winner It's star number 10,300. Um, oh, um, I think that is the hip number, actually. Uh, I'm going to need to look at the... Uh, oh, that's the HYG number. So that's what we want. So. <laughs> Let's look at that. Yeah, and maybe be a little bit more like this. And it is hip ten three two four. Um Looks pretty darn far away. I think we did this before and we found out this was a mistake. Uh, I, well, I mean, obviously, as the moon moves through the sky, it will. Um, oh, okay. This is meant okay. All right, so a clear miss from here, but. Um, it's just the latitude actually that matters. I, 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 I just say that because I want to feel smart. I don't think that has anything to do with anything. All right, but we'll, let's see what happens if we move the latitude down a little bit. Okay, so this kind of brings it, oh, actually, that brings it a lot closer. So, yeah. So now here it looks like if you add the, subtract a little bit of time. Um, yeah, okay. <coughs> Um, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if we've tested this. Hello, 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 hello! What you, what I'm currently streaming? No, I cannot explain what I can, I can give it a shot, though. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find when the uh, moon occults bright stars, but I'm actually more interested in trying to figure out when, um, for example, a planet like Mars or Jupiter or Saturn occults a bright star. Uh, but I'm using the moon as a test, and I'm using Stellarium as as my um, as my sort of uh, visual confirmation of what's what's happening. Uh, so the the problem with the moon is because the moon is so uh, because the moon's parallax, meaning where you see it depending on where you are on the Earth, is so big, it's quite possible that there's an occultation of a star in one location, which is what we're seeing now. Uh, whereas in another location, there is no occultation of a star. So that's the kind of thing that I, um, that I have to keep in mind with the moon. And the problem is now, if I'm going to look at other planets occulting stars, is that they're very small and it's very rare that they will occult a star. So the, they're sort of the opposite problem of the moon being too big and too close, the other planets being too small and too far away. I hope that helped. Um, so, do you have any comments? Oh, occulting means to cover up a star. So let me, let me, so you can see over here, let me actually go back a little bit in time. Um, where's my, oh, there it is. 
Okay, so if we go here, the moon starts going forward. The star is Al Kaf Al Jidmad 2, which is HD, uh, HR 649. Um, and so now, if you watch as time passes, we'll speed up this passage of time a little bit here. The moon, if you were watching this, you would see the moon cover the star, and then later, of course, uncover the star as the moon moves through the sky. Um, and I'm interested in this for what I call bright stars. This star is meaning visible stars. Um, you betcha. Um, so th for visible stars, uh, I, I'm interested in seeing when the moon occults them. And I'm more interested in seeing when um, a planet occults them because that is much rarer and it looks a lot cooler uh, when it happens. Okay, uh, do you have any questions, comments? Anything else you would like from me? Okay, thank you. All right, I've been streaming for two hours and 11 minutes. And as always, I pretend like I will come back later, but I probably will not. Thank you for watching the stream, and goodbye for now. Sorry you came in so late, uh, Duje Uswutu. Um, although I don't, if this is not interesting to you, it doesn't really matter when you came in. Thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.